Hey everyone, I just released a Blender glitch effect over on Gumroad, so this video will be showing how you can achieve a similar result without going into the compositor. If you want the effect without making it, check it out in my shop. I made it so it's neat, customizable, and easy to use and reuse. This method allows us to use the procedural textures in the shader editor that the compositor doesn't have. One thing about this method is that you'll need a video clip already rendered out, so if you're following along with this, make sure you have a clip handy. Let's get started. So I'm in Blender 2.83 for this one. First thing I'm going to do is set up the camera. So I usually have my camera parented to an empty. I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to delete any lights in the scene too, because we're not going to need those. And then I'm just going to clear the location and rotation and move this up a little and add in a plane. I'm just going to press zero to look through the camera and, and I'm just going to scale that plane up like this. Uh, next, I'm going to switch over to the shading tab over here, and I'm going to make sure we're in look dev mode. Press zero to look through the camera again, select your plane, uh, come over here, change this from world to object if it's not already, and add a new material. I'm just going to delete this principled BSDF shader and add in uh, an image texture. I'm just going to plug it in to the surface right here. And I'm just going to click on open to navigate to my video clip. So now you can see that this is stretching to be the same shape as our plane, and we don't want that. So I'm just going to select this video clip and press Control t If you have the Node Wrangler add-on, this will add the texture coordinate and mapping. I'm just going to delete the mapping and change this from UV to Window. And this is kind of where the magic happens. Basically, as soon as you uh, set this up to Window, it should fit perfectly. And if it doesn't, your video might be the wrong uh, aspect ratio, and you just have to change that over here. So now if we press play, you'll see that it's not really working, and that's because I need to change this frame amount to be the same number of frames that are in our video clip. So this one is only 100 frames. And I'm also going to turn on cyclic and auto refresh, and now you can see that it's working. And you can see that it's set to repeat also, uh, and you want to keep it that way, and I'll show you why later. Um, you could also do extend or clip, but I choose to use the repeat. So the first effect I'm going to go for is a distortion effect. And to do that, I am just going to add in a Voronoi texture. And I'm going to use uh, the object texture coordinate for that one. I'm just going to press Control shift click on that to preview it. And I'm also going to add a mapping. And I'm just going to change the X to 0. So we just have strips. And instead of using the distance, we're actually going to use the color for this. And I'm going to set this from F1 to smooth F1. That way, we can decide whether we want these edges to be hard or smooth like that. And once we run this through any kind of math node, uh, unless it's a vector math node, uh, this sh should turn grayscale. So now if we add another mapping uh, and hook that up before the video, plug this in and we plug uh, this into the location, we'll already see we're getting some distortion. But I want this to only distort on the X or Y. So I'm going to add a combine X, Y, Z right here. And then we can choose which one this is plugged into. So for this, I'm going to use the Y. So it should distort up and down. And if you use uh, this multiply set to zero, this should make no effect, and if you uh, turn it up slowly, you can see a gradual effect. If you turn the smoothness up a little, and right now this isn't animated and we want it to be like waves rolling down, so I am going to add another combine XYZ, because what we're going to do is make it so the Y is animated. So plug that in here. That way we have control of all of these separately. I'm going to add a value node. And in that, I'm just going to type pound and then frame. We can see that's set to 133. And that's because we're on frame 133. When you type that in there, it just matches the frame. So now when we plug that into the Y, we can see it's animated now. But it's going a little fast. So I'm going to add another math node and set that to divide. And now the higher we make this number, the slower it should animate. So I'm just going to set this to uh, 200. And also I want to be able to affect the distribution of this texture right here. Because right now the whole thing is distorting. There's no spots that aren't distorted. So I'm just going to add another math node. I'm just going to use uh, add for that. 
So that way, if you keep going, um, the value ends at 1, and it will never go lower than 0 also. So I just moved the add before the multiply, because it's working a little better that way. And now you can, if you want this to be off, you just set it to about negative 1, and 1 is about maximum. So 0 is right in the middle. And you can just go one way or another to make these lines appear. I'll turn this up to 1 so we can see a little better. So the black spots are where it's not going to be distorted, and anything that's not black is going to be distorted. So if we look at our image now, we can see that a lot of our screen is not being distorted. And then you can just affect the multiply to decide how strong you want it to be. So now we have this basic distortion effect. And if you wanted a second layer of that, we can do that pretty easily, basically by just uh, copying all of this, making sure this is plugged in. We're just going to grab another math node and add these two together, and then plug it in right here. Okay, so now we have two distortion effects going on, and we can just change the scale of one of these. Like that, and just turn the multiply down slightly. And we also want to make sure that this is using the object uh, texture coordinates over here. So now this one is off all the way, and this one is up. You can see that, and I, I'll just turn this one up very slightly can get some minor distortion. Okay, next we're going to do a color dispersion effect. And to do that, we're going to need to separate our video clip into uh, separate RG and B channels. So to do that, we're going to use a separate RGB and a combine RGB right here. And we actually need to duplicate this three times. So we have uh, one video each for RG and B. But an easier way to do this is to click on that and press uh, Control-G, and that will group it. And then we can just go like this. And that way, whenever we update one of them, all of them will be updated. They're all linked. So we can just plug this in here. I'm actually going to use a reroute. That way they all are coming from the same node right there. And I'm just going to plug these in, but make sure I don't need to use this alpha, so I'm just going to delete that and plug these into the R, G, and B, and then put the separate R, G, and B for all of these also, and just make sure that they're lined up correctly. So the R and the R, G, G, and B, B, like that. Now I'm just going to make some space right here because what we're going to do is move these around slightly. So I'm going to use a vector math, and I'm going to leave that set to add. So now you can see, once I plug that in here, this one is x, this one is y, and this one is z. So if I move this on the x, you can see it's only moving the red. I'm just going to duplicate this for each channel. I'm going to make the value right here. I'm going to grab a combine x, y, z. That way we can decide which axis we want these to move on. And they're all going to be moving on the x. And then I'm going to grab just a regular math node and plug the value in here into the top one and make sure these are both plugged into the X. And I'm going to skip the G and I'll show you why later. And so for this one, I'm going to set to point 0.1 and this one I'm going to set to negative point 0.1. And this leaves our G channel right in the, the very center. And now if we set this to zero, oh, you know what? I have to change this to um, multiplication. There. So if we set it to zero, nothing is happening, and if we move this up slowly, we can see it slowly starts to spread, and the G stays in the middle. That way our image should be basically centered. So you don't really need to have these here, but I like them there just for consistency, and because if you want to alter it later, you can come in and mess with it. You can see this moves pretty fast, so if you want it to move slower, you can bring another math node in here, set that to uh, divide. I'm just going to group these together and throw the divide right here. And if you make this number something big, like a 1,000, then this will give you more fine-tuned control. But if you wanted to use a texture instead, that works also. Basically, you can just delete that right here. And I'm just going to use the same textures we just made 
and I'm just going to grab the add and multiply over here. And this add node over here. So we're just going to basically do the same thing up there to add those together. Plug this into the first slot for the divide, and then you can add these two together. And grab the color from the Voronoi. Plug that in here, and the second Voronoi into the first slot there. So now we have these for the distribution again, and this for the strength. So let's just turn the smoothness down. That way we can see all of these little spots. And we can see when we turn this up, this is distorting in the same spots right here. And I'm going to shut that one off, turn the smoothness up, and then turn the smoothness down for this one. And now we can see when we turn that one up, it's only in the big lines that this, uh, the dispersion happens. And this should work with the smoothness also, since it's using the same texture. One other thing we can do is make the screen glitch and roll over occasionally. And the way we do that is by adding another mapping node uh, using the, the window texture coordinate. I'm just going to add it close to the beginning. And when we mess with this Y here, since we're using a uh, repeat, you can see that it, uh, it rolls up and down like that. You can go side by side too, but uh, you know, on an actual VCR, you'll get rolling going up and down like that. So I'm just going to go back to the first keyframe, or to keyframe zero rather, and insert a keyframe for just the Y. I'm going to pull this up a little and press control tab to go into the, uh, the graph editor and press N so we can get that side panel. Select that keyframe, go over to modifiers and choose noise. We can see it adds that jitter right there. We can also add a limit and tell it to not go below zero. And I'm just going to mess with the size of our noise texture to be something like 20. Seems good. And if you have your keyframe selected here, you can still press G and Y to move it up and down like that. So say you only want it to glitch out every once in a while, you just have to press G and Y and then move it down so those peaks are uh, just showing like that. So most of it is flat, but when it goes over one, it'll glitch out like that. And if you want it to go up or down more, you can just change the, the strength to go much higher. like that, and add some depth for detail. I'll just turn this up to four. And I'm just going to bring this down slightly so it only happens occasionally. The last thing I'm going to show is uh, how to put some static on top of it. And with that, we're going to make a new texture. So I'm going to go back to the beginning, add a noise texture right here, and grab the uh, object texture coordinate to plug that in. And this is going to go pretty close to the front. So right after this combine RGB, I'm going to add a mix RGB. And we can, tr can control where the static is with the factor right here. And then the texture of our static is going to be in the second color slot. I'm going to add a mapping right here. That way we can control it a little. And I'm going to plug it in over here. And I'm just going to turn the factor all the way up. That way we can see our noise texture. And so this noise texture is going to be our mask, and I want there to be um, a way to control how close the black and the white values are. So I'm going to add a um, map range right here, and I'm going to add a value and a math set to add. I'm just going to plug these into the from min, the value into the add, and then the add into the from max. That way, when I change this, um, the black and the white are this far apart. So if I set this to point 0.1, the edge, is, the edge will be a little harder. And I'm just going to plug this into the factor and change this to white for now. So we can see this is our mask, and the black spot is our video, and the white spot is uh, just this color right here. I'm also going to change this to 4D, and I'm going to grab the frame value over here from way far away and uh, plug that in right there. That way it's animated right here to look more like static. I'm also going to scale this down 
so it stretches on our uh, on our X. And then we can turn this up pretty high like that. So now we can change how much static there is by changing this uh, value slider right here. So if we only want a little, we can just do that. And if you want those to be like more like lines, you can turn this down all the way to zero and then it'll be lines like that. But I like to set it a little above zero so it's just really stretched. So I'm gonna set it to 0 0.05 like that. And I'm also going to add another noise texture in here and grab this texture coordinate and grab the, uh, the frame value right here. So now both of these should be animated and I'm just going to use the second one for our static texture, the color of it. And I'm also going to add a math node set to greater than. That way our noise texture is just black and white. You can see right here, this is what it should look like. So I'm gonna turn this up pretty high. Something like uh, something like that, and the distortion up pretty high too to make it look a little more irregular. And for the scale, I'm just going to set that to 100. So now if we preview it, we get this kind of effect. I'm also going to turn this one up to something like 50. And you can just adjust this however you like. So I think it should be down a little further and the edge should be a little more crisp, so 0 0.01 maybe. And I'm going to turn the distortion up slightly too. So now when we play it, that actually looks like pretty good static. When you stop it and zoom in, you can see that it is pretty clear. So if you want, you can turn up the, the detail or something like that. But also when this is in motion and uh, rendered at a lower resolution, it should look pretty natural. Also, one last thing, when you go to render it and choose your output and everything down over here, um, I recommend instead of rendering it up here to do viewport render by going to your viewport. Under view, you can do um, viewport render animation, and that'll basically give you whatever uh, you see in your viewport. Um, this also does work in cycles, but I recommend rendering it this way because it's much faster. Um, and it should output pretty fast since your original video is just a video sequence. It doesn't really have to do much work. And that's pretty much all there is to it. If you like this video, consider liking and subscribing. I like seeing all your work. So if you use this effect in one of your projects, tag me on social media so I can check it out. I recently did a collaboration with Dimension Diving, who also makes Blender tutorials. So check that out if you haven't. Links for everything are in the description. Thanks for watching. See ya.